Well, it's finally starting to warm up across the U.S. as spring springs into season. Uh, but the U.S. Energy Information Administration estimates that from November through March, Americans spent between $600 and $1,000 to heat their homes. And once those summer heat waves get started, the department estimates homeowners spend $29 billion a year trying to cool off. So joining me now to talk about how his company is trying to improve heating and cooling solutions is Marshall Cox, CEO of Calvin. Uh, Marshall, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. How is your company trying to help Americans save money while still being comfortable? That's a great question. So a lot of buildings that we look at are the older buildings you find in urban areas like New York City, radiator heated buildings. And these buildings tend to overheat dramatically and use kind of commodity air conditioners in the summer. And they're kind of stuck in that loop. They have technologies that's been there for 100 years that's very hard to replace. And we're developing a technology platform that allows these buildings to transition to high efficiency heat pump technology without any upfront cost and by lowering operating their costs, making an economically driven pathway for them and overcoming the procedural barriers that these buildings have for that transition. What does a transition like this look like? How does it happen? Yeah, so, um, so these buildings generally, you know, a big building in New York City has a boiler and they, they bought that boiler and you generally don't replace those boilers until they die. When they die, it's often in the middle of the winter, and that's an emergency, particularly if you have 100 families that are living in that apartment. Uh, and so um, almost always, buildings replace their boilers when they die in February with another boiler, and they lock themselves into another 15, 20 years. And to break that cycle, you really have to give them a means to step away from that technology that doesn't require an enormous you know, building retrofit, which should cost millions of dollars and could literally take years to, to, to do. So we developed a technology that is a, a low-cost heat pump that we install that works in tandem with the radiator system. So it only heats the building when it's above freezing, and when it gets really cold out, you use the radiator system just as you usually do. And what this lets us do is it lets us retrofit those buildings now and move all of that heating above freezing onto high-efficiency electric heat. Mm -hmm. By operating this, this building well at, going forward, we can, act, we can you know, not only create value for the building owner and the residents, mm -hmm. but once that boiler dies, we're in a position with a plan to help the building transition fully to electric when their boiler dies, and not only by making it economically viable, but also having a backup heating system for when that boiler dies in the middle of the winter. Is it safe in the transition to electric? We've been talking a lot, obviously, about new electric technology, how it's supposed to be clean, how it's supposed to be efficient. Uh, yet we have done stories, you know, in, in seemingly what might be one-off cases, uh, but I certainly get my notice uh, now from the city, New York City, about how to properly care for uh, some of these electric upgrades. How does that impact these buildings if they do want to go this route? Yeah, so I think, I think in general people want to. Radiator heating is, is inefficient, it's expensive. You know, you're burning fuel in the building that then goes into the air that you breathe. So there's a lot of reasons to move away from it, um, including obviously, you know, if you're concerned about climate change and, and, and reducing our carbon emissions. Um, the technology today is really good. Uh, it, it still needs maintenance like any air conditioning system does, but it's generally this, it's, it's basically the same technology as your air conditioner, just writ large and, and with more sophisticated technology to provide heating on those cold, cold days. Um, but I think in general, it's safe, it's proven. The, the, the challenge is how we get there from today in this building segment. So uh, realistically, how long could that timetable take? Um, well, it could take, it could never happen. Um, I think that the administration is trying to, to make this happen before 2050. Um, a lot of barriers exist to, towards that happening. And, and again, as boilers have a lifetime of 15, 20, sometimes 30 years, um, if you have to wait for those boilers to die, it will take that long to make it happen. And we as a company are, are trying to make that timetable much faster. And have you been successful? Do you have deals with some of the buildings in Manhattan? Yeah, so, um, so we have a few different technologies, and I, and I mentioned this, this pathway towards decarbonization. Um, the first step is getting control over the, the building heating system, and we have a technology called the COSI, which we deploy at scale to do that. We, in fact, just did our first installation yesterday at a, at a property, um, 1100 apartment complex, Fordham Hill Oval in the Bronx, um, eliminating entirely their local 097 uh, fine potential, um, while saving them, you know, I'd say six-digit numbers in heating costs uh, with a no upfront cost model that's paid for for savings. So we have this first step technology is available to everybody. We've deployed a lot of them. We've sold over 30,000 of them. And that's what's growing significantly today. Mm -hmm. That second step to electrification is something we'll be releasing in early 2025. What is the upfront cost to other buildings if they want to get on board? It is literally zero dollars. So we have a subscription offering 
which allows us to finance the deployment of technology predicated on future savings. And so we, we have a low cost, about $15 per apartment per month su subscription, that is pretty much always paid for by savings for buildings. So, that, so literally our cost of buildings is zero dollars up front. And in terms of how a new administration might impact your business model, walk our viewers through what they would need to know about that. Um, you know, a, a new administration wouldn't really change. Every, people, I, I would say there's, there's varying levels of interest in environmentally beneficial technology, and take that as you will, but what we're building is an economically driven pathway towards decarbonization. And if you can make it economically viable, people will do it regardless. How do you quantify the decarbonization savings on this? Uh, so we, so our, our first step technology, the COSI, saves between 25 and 40 percent in heating costs, and that is the exact same number as you'd expect for savings in emissions. So it's a pretty substantial savings. What do you think is the role that technology needs to play in fighting the larger climate crisis? I think it plays a pivotal role. Um, it's very hard to expect humanity on the whole to change the way they live, um, but we can certainly provide the same level of comforts and, and standard of living to people uh, on a lower carbon basis through advanced technology. A lot of the things we use today are, you know, 100-year-old te technology, radiators being a perfect example. Um, there are better ways to do those same things. The challenge is how we transition to those things. And what's next for your company? We are working very hard on, on deploying this, this electrification technology and getting in, making this offering to buildings in New York City and other big cities around the world, um, again, in 2025, and we're raising a, a significant funding round uh, this year to make that happen. And, and how challenging or easy has it been to access uh, the funding uh, these days? I know with interest rates high, some companies have struggled. Is, is that similar to your journey? It's a very good question. Um, it, it is, it's always a challenge. Interest rates are high. Um, our technology p saves enough that we are actually not that squeezed by higher interest rates. Um, although uh, the, the IRA is, is releasing a new round of funding called the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund, which is going to dramatically um, speed up deployment of technologies like this yeah. um, because it can supply lower interest rates for exactly building retrofits. Where have you been able to find uh, the interest or the demand in terms of funding and, and backing your company? Yeah, it's been everywhere. I mean, um, certainly, uh, you know, the, the, the general, the standard investor communities are interested in things that make money and we can show that we can make, make money. I, I'd say that we found much more interest in those, those climate-driven um, investment firms um, people who care about urban solutions, people who care about um, building and infrastructure. All right. Uh, Marshall Cox, CEO of Kelvin, uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me.